Hello, Year 8. There's something I'd like to know. How deep is your love? Is it more than worth its weight in gold? You know what? I've got sunshine on this cloudy day. And when it's cold outside, I've got the month of May. And guess, I'd guess you'd say, what can make me feel this way? Well, we're starting a new unit today. And that is going to be, does love make the world go round? Super excited today, guys, to introduce you to this new unit. It's going to be a really fun and creative unit and one that will really build your critical skills. And I think it's going to be even more fun if we can make it something where we really think positively and also just have a laugh about this concept of love. Now, I'm going to take you through the unit information, all the nitty gritties that you need to know so that you understand what we're doing, why we're doing it and where we're headed. So at this point, please make sure that you have the unit information sheet, which is a PDF file that you can find in the files section of this page. Have that sheet, have it in front of you as we go through this. You can highlight parts that um, I will draw your attention to. You can do that on your computer. Um, so come along with me and let's have a look at our new unit. Now, I can't promise that I'll hold you when it's cold out, when we lose our winter coats in the spring. But you know what, guys, I can promise to give you some information on this unit. Here's our statement of inquiry. Have a copy of this in front of you because I'm going to ask you to highlight some key words. Let's have a look at this and see what words stand out to you. The theme of love has resonated with humans across the globe for centuries. And for as long as we have loved, we have used poetic style as a means of self-expression, as a way to make connections and to better understand our relationships with others. Now, what keywords did you notice? When I read this, one word in particular that stands out to me is obviously love. This is what we're going to be exploring. Our theme, uh, the subject of this inquiry is love. And another word that stands out to me is resonated. So love resonates with humans all over the world and for as long as we have lived. So that's one of the main concepts that we are going to be exploring here is looking at how love really um, interests people um, and, and lots and lots and lots of people seek to examine the nature of love. And this statement of inquiry is suggesting that we use poetry in three different ways. See if you can work out what they are. We have used poetic style as a means of, that's right, self-expression. That's the first way that we use poetry as a means of self-expression. How else do we use poetry? We also use it as a way to make connections. Okay, that's number two. And we also use poetry as a way to better understand our relationships. That's number three. So you can see the three different ways that we use poetry. Self-expression, to make connections, and to better understand our relationships. So now you can see these are the big ideas that we are going to be exploring 
in this unit. What I would like you to do now is there are two words that I would like you to look up. I would like you to use a dictionary to define this word, resonate. What does that mean? And I'd like you to write down um, what the what are the different ways that we can understand this word. And I'd also like you to look up the word self-expression. What does it actually mean? What are the different ways that we express ourselves? And and so I'd like you to try to, to find the definition for those words so that you better understand what the statement of inquiry is, is saying. And I'd also like you to find synonyms for that, for the word connections. Now, in order to find synonyms, you need to use the thesaurus. And when you use an on, if you're using an online dictionary, when you find an online dictionary, you, you'll have an option to either look up something in the dictionary, and often there's a drop down box and you can select the thesaurus. Um, that's really handy to know that. So use that thesaurus function and see if you can find some synonyms for the word connections. And then that will give you, again, a bigger understanding of this statement of inquiry. So hit the pause button now, go and do that, and then come back because we've got more to learn. I'll see you in a bit. Welcome back guys. We're going to look at some of the concepts of our unit. So our key concepts, of course, is connections. And now that you have looked up some synonyms for that, that'll give you an idea of the sorts of things that is going to guide our inquiry. We are also going to be looking at theme, style, and self-expression. When we use the word theme, we are referring to the poet's message or opinion about love. And yes, I did just write love with a heart. You betcha guys. So when a poet is saying something about a subject, that is a theme. So love is the subject. When we are looking at a piece of writing, you need to try to work out what is the poet saying about love. Some poets will say that love is never ending and that true love goes beyond time and place. Some poets will suggest that love is, um, is only possible if you find that one real true soulmate. Some people suggest their opinion about love is that love is only for a fleeting moment and that you can only experience love on a physical level. Some people talk about love being true, love being something that is purely spiritual. So see what I mean? Love is the subject. What you guys need to work out is what's the theme? What is the message? What is the poet's opinion about love? And then what it's really good for you to do is also then to compare it to your own. Now, when we're looking at style, style is just the, the way that the poet creates their ideas. There are different types of poetry. What style has this poet uh, used? And often um, style comes with the words they choose, the way they choose to structure their ideas. 
um, the different poetic ingredients that they choose to put in there. And then now that you've looked up the word self-expression, you'll understand more about what that word means, how we choose to communicate and shape our ideas. And you will have an opportunity to not just look at what other people are doing, but you'll have an opportunity to do that yourself. And then our global context is identities and relationships. Who are we? In? How do we fit in this world? What are relationships? Why are they important? And how do they help to shape our own identities? Right. Remember guys, when the skies are gray and all the doors are closing and the rising pressure makes it hard to breathe, when all you need is a hand to stop the tears from falling, you will find everything you need right here in our unit questions, which are, what is love? What are the conventions of love poetry? Where do we get our ideas about romantic love? How do literature and film shape our ideas about love? Can love transcend cultural boundaries? Is love really blind? Does literature give us unrealistic expectations about love? And is there such a thing as true love? These are great questions because they get you to think about the world beyond the classroom. And they get you to question ideas that we're often fed to, you know, we're fed these ideas from a very young age. We are exposed to these ideas in books and in film. And, and often we don't question what we think and why we think it. And these questions are really great in helping us to work through those things. So firstly, we're going to look at what is love. We're going to think about what does that look like? What are the different ways that we see love? Then we're going to, to explore the conventions of love poetry. Now you know what conventions are because you, you were exploring that concept in our Gothic unit where, where we looked at the ingredients, what makes a Gothic story Gothic because of the ingredients in the text. And so when we're looking at poetry, you're thinking, all right, what are the ingredients that are in this poem that make it a love poem. How do I know this is a love poem and not something else? And so that's one thing that we're going to learn. We're gonna learn about the conventions of love poetry. Then we're going to look at, well, where do we get our ideas about romantic love? What is giving us these ideas? And then that is, has, nicely feeds into the next question how do literature and film shape our ideas about love? What are we watching? What are we reading that is shaping the way, is influencing the way that we think about love? And, and really th thinking about how actually a lot of what we read and a lot of what we watch really does influence the way we think. Then we're going to be looking at love transcending cultural boundaries. Can that happen? We're questioning whether love, is it really blind? And what does that actually mean for love to be blind? Does literature give us unrealistic expectations of love? And this links nicely to our previous question. Are our expectations unrealistic? And is that often why we in the future will, and maybe even right now have problems with experiencing love or understanding love because our expectations may not necessarily be realistic. What should our expectations about love be? And then is there such a thing as true love? And that also links nicely here because this is often what we are told in society 
that we're told there is that such a thing as true love and that you just have to look for it and you'll find it. And we're thinking about, well, is that true? What does that look like? Um, and, and so it really helps us to unpack these ideas that I hope will, will really help you think more deeply about what you believe and why you believe these ideas. It's going to be a great unit. It's going to be so much fun and I can't wait to teach it with you. So I want you to remember, I could make you happy. I can make your English dreams come true. There's nothing, guys, that I wouldn't do to help you succeed with these unit tasks. The first unit task is writing a love sonnet. You will learn about love sonnets. You will learn about the conventions, the ingredients of what makes a sonnet a sonnet. And then you'll have an opportunity to, to really explore and be really creative and, and write your own love sonnet. And trust me, guys, if you can write a love sonnet, this is a great way to test how good you really are. A lot of people write sonnets because they want to show, hey, check me out. I am super clever. I can write a sonnet. It's a lot of fun and it's great for us to have opportunities to be creative. And secondly, you will read and analyse a poem about love and you'll compare it to another you have read. Very similar to what you did in your Gothic unit. So in this course, you will find out what the conventions of love poetry are so that you can write your own and analyse other people's. Explore how literature, art and culture have shaped ideas of love and relationships and still do today. You will take action to read more poetry and spread the love. So that's what we're going to be doing. I hope that this has helped you understand more about what we're doing and where we're going and why we're doing it. Uh, I know that a lot of you are going to be cringing right now and are going to be doing lots of moaning and groaning. Um, and I want to challenge you to, to just be really open-minded about this and to see that this is a great opportunity to have some fun and to grow in your knowledge and skills in English. So just embrace it. Embrace the love and come to class each day wanting to share that love around. Thanks, guys. I'll see you later.